Okie dokie. So it's finally spring and I'm getting around to testing out my flow frame power extractor. Um, so I've got a hive here. Um, they've got a whole heap of honey in there. Um, and you, you can see that they're all full in the back here. But I've also had a look in there and confirmed that for these centre four, they're all fully capped. The outside two have some patchy capping on the outside. So for this test, I'll take from one of these two centres and we'll see how we go. So I've got all the bits and bobs set up here. This is a food safe bucket from Bunnings and a cordless drill. And here's the setup shown in the previous video. I've got a groove and a circlip on there. So the idea is we slot this in and then we crack the, hunt, crack the flow frame so the honey starts to drizzle down and comes out this pipe and into our bucket. So bear with me while I set that up real quick. Apologies if you hear the sound of a lawnmower in the background. That's Sam. So my hose is a, a smidge long, but um, I'll be able to cut that down for future tests. I might get rid of my horizontal slats here and put it down fully on the ground. It's a bit better. Not really ideal, but hey. Alright. Get shot of my head. Let's crack off the cap down the bottom. Get a peek down inside. Sam's come to say hello. Hello! <laughs> hello Sammy, how you doing? Good. Good. Yeah, I can see that. Alright. Let's give it a give it a dry run. Should check for any Unforeseen conflagrances. Oh, that's backwards. That's the general operation. Alrighty. I think I might make myself a socket so I'm not fiddling about undoing and doing up the chuck. It's just a hex socket to go on there. I'm recording a video, Sammy, to show how the widget I've built works. Or maybe if it works. We'll see how she goes. Let's hook up the pipe. Alright, Sammy, you ready to see some honey come down? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we go. Okay, last sanity check. I'm about to start cracking the hive bucket. Click that lid on a little bit. Ugh. It's sturdy, it's not going anywhere once it gets heavy. That's on solid. Okay, so any failure modes, or well the failure modes I'm expecting is that honey is going to start coming out around here and dribbling down the back. Um, I'm fully suited up except for gloves and hood. Um, so I can flip my hood over if the bees start getting stroppy and start going to try to harvest some honey off me. Um, and I'll tell Sammy to run away because the bees might get angry. No! Probably not. Yeah, you're right, Sammy. Okay. Check that the video is still recording. It is. Check the framing. Looks good. Okay. 
start cracking some. Yeah, that's right. That bee got that bee got caught in your hair, didn't he? Yeah. She. Cheeky bee. Oh, it was just an accident. That bee was a cheeky bee. A cheeky bee. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's backwards. Honey. Oh, look at that, honey. Honey's coming down. Honey's coming down. Honey's coming down, Dada. What's that, Sammy? Okay, that appears to be working. Let's crack some more frames. I'll crack more of the frame. So now that it's fully cracked. And there should be about two kilos of honey in there. Mm. That appears to be doing what it says on the tin, or what I'd like to write on the tin. So speed control on the drill is a bit tricky. I've got it in low range, um, but I'm not really sure what the ideal speed is. Maybe I'll speed it up and see if I get faster honey. No, not really. So I should probably keep it low speed and try to keep the flutes full of honey. So I, I think. What? You're too big to fit down the honey tube? Yeah. Like Augustus Bloop. Mm. Um, so I'm thinking I'd like to have a dedicated motor driving the shaft rather than a drill. Just so I can finally control the speed. What's that, Sammy? Crushes things? What do you mean? The Hulk. Oh, the Hulk crushes things, does he? Yeah. Careful, Sammy. I'm going to put this video on YouTube. I don't want to take down requests from Disney because we mentioned the Hulk. Let's try going faster, see if we get... The rest of the bees are going in the hive. It's hard to estimate the speed of the flow just by looking at the pipe. But I'm trying to look at how full the pipe is, like how much air is in there, to work out the sort of flowing cross-section of honey. I think going faster does actually fill up the pipe more, even if it isn't visibly flowing down the pipe faster. Let's go even faster. So far the bees don't seem to have any opinion on me. I'm not sure how audible I am over the sound of the drill. I'll just talk a bit louder. Yeah, I really need some sort of flow rate measurement. It just look when I'm going slower, and I couldn't I couldn't comprehensively say whether the pipe is fuller or emptier when I'm going more slowly. You're sitting down like this. Why is that? Oh, okay, fair enough. I'm kind of surprised it's still going. I would have expected it to be empty by now. Which makes me think that we're not... What if I stop altogether? So we are still getting some drainage, but... You know, if I gun it... We get a, a big glut. Okay. 
So the trade-offs with going faster are that you create more heat and noise and friction and potentially aggravate the bees and increase wear and tear on parts. Yeah, they might get angry at me if I make too much noise. Um, and also the flow frames aren't really designed for this, to have something mechanical wiggling around inside. Um, so this is a wood auger that I bought from Bunnings. I think it's 18 millimeters outside diameter, about that. And I went over it with sandpaper, lots of sandpaper, lots of steel wool to take off every sharp edge. So everything is very well rounded over in there, so it will minimise any damage to the inside of the plastic. Um, but still. Um, and this honey is going to be put through a very, very fine filter, so any, any small bits of plastic that come off the inside of the frame, or any paint that chips off the auger, or any plastic from this assembly will get filtered out, unless it is smaller than the size of a grain of pollen. Okay, so it looks like we're starting to run, run out of honey in the gutter now. So how long is the video? 11 minutes 24. Well, I'll have to look at the timestamp when I started. But it's a relatively warm day, so the benefits of powered extraction aren't as apparent. The real benefit of powered extraction is when it's a bit of a cool day and the honey is very viscous and drains much more slowly. Um, but this definitely appears to be doing the job. And the only question is whether it does the job better than just hooking up a pipe and sitting on a chair and forgetting about it. I think the, the weight of this whole system and where the centre of gravity sits and such could be optimised such that the motor and battery arrangements sit here to balance the weight a bit, such that it could just be a plug-in, hook up the pipe, flick a switch, and waltz off. You don't have to sit there and monitor it. Um, that would be nice. And the other, the other benefit is that it's getting every last skerrick out. Well, it's getting a fair bit out. Um, previously, the flow rate graph would sort of spike up enormously and then tail off, and then you'd have this very long tail where it wasn't necessarily worth sticking around to get the last drag out. But this is doing a, a pretty good job. It'll have a much squarer, uh, a much steeper taper at the end of the extraction curve. So I might reset the flow frames now, just so I don't forget to do it later. Honey! honey. Are you going to have some honey on a croissant, Sammy? Yeah. I like honey all the time. You like honey all the time? Yeah. Is that true? I'm pretty sure you only really like honey on croissants. So it looks like there's like a, a wave or a bead forming in front of the screw, but I'm not really sure if all of the honey that's in that wave is being carried along, or whether it's like a static wave. There we go. Super fast. I don't really see the huge increase in outflow that I'd expect to see. In terms of heat, this is actually getting slightly warm. Probably just from the friction of the honey being perturbed. But yeah, if I gun it in this mode, I don't really see the push that I expect to see. Like, it's not a one to run relationship between RPM and honey outflow. I would love to have a little transparent section in there so I can see if the honey is leaving the screw as it's designed to. Or if there's some sort of impediment that's providing some sort of weird back pressure. One of the brushes in this in this uh, cordless drill has died. That's a good it's good distance, Sammy. Hmm. 
Anyhow, uh, I think I'll call it quits there. Let's um, thank the bees for their honey. Thank you, bees. Make sure that I've fully reset the whole frame. Um, so there's still an ongoing endless discussion about whether flow frames are the devil or the best. Um, I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, they're expensive as hell, but they make extraction trivial, is what I usually say. Um, and there's a concern that um, the sort of marketing of um, the flow frames made it seem as though having bees was trivial and you don't need to worry about them, you just set them up and then hey, you've got honey on tap for the rest of your life. But no, you do have to look after them. And I'd kind of dismissed that concern from experienced beekeepers, like, oh, psh, they're just being curmudgeonly old gatekeepers, they don't really think that that's true, or they've got motivated reasoning. But I have personally encountered a few cases of people buying flow frames, getting a beehive set up, and then just like, oh, it's too much work, they just swarm all the time, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I'd say the, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, shockingly. Now, where's the wee cap for that? Ah. Ah. So, uh, there's always some honey left in the bottom of the trough as residue dribbles out. Um, but the little cap you put on the end has a, these little bumps in here that leaves a little gap. So the excess honey dribbles down the back of inside the hive. Um, the other benefit of the powder extraction is that when you crack the frames, some honey does seep through the bottom of the frame and into the hive. And opinions vary, but generally it's best to avoid honey flowing over your brood frames because um, that, can, that can cause problems for the brood. I'm hoping this would result in that honey being up against the interface for a much shorter period of time so the honey exits the hive faster. Um, so I'm going to go filter and weigh that honey. I expect to be about two kilos in there. Um, and I'll check the filter for any bits of plastic or anything, but I think that was a great success. Um, so I'm thinking I'll, I'll 3D print a, a gear and some sort of drive arrangement here uh, and a small LiPo battery there or some 18650s or something to make it a self-contained unit. Just slop it on, flick a switch and it, it pumps the honey out. So let's um, unhook this pipe. Woo, you're standing on the slide Sammy, good job. And. Pop this out. Ooh, honey. Very nice. Alright, um, so I'm going to go through and check all this for any damage or any anything I can improve about the design. But um, just at that cursory glance it all looks perfectly fine. Um, you can see some of the enamel paint here is scratched off. Um, that was when I was scratching it to see if it was dry. And it turns out it wasn't dry. So I did another coat over it and then waited two weeks and then scratched it again and it's absolutely rock solid. Uh, so food safe um, enamel spray paint. Alright, so we see, hold on Sammy, see down inside there as it turns, uh, it's just gravity pulling it off that, off the screw. Um, so maybe there's something to be improved there. Likewise, you can see where I scratched all the enamel off inside there uh, before I put the second coat over the top. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, put the lid on, let the bees clean up. What? Sweet. Bye bye.